Hi, welcome to Camp Tallulah, and my name is Jeff, and today during Tallulah Trails, I want to answer a question that I've answered a thousand times before, and that really is, what does poison ivy look like, and how do I tell if I'm in trouble? Well, pretty much everybody knows that poison ivy is a plant, and it has three leaves, but for a lot of folks, that's where kind of like their ability to identify it stops. So certainly, if I had a leaf like this, you'd say, well, no, it's got five leaves, that's not poison ivy. And, and you'd be right. But what if you had a plant like this? Uh-oh, leaves of three, let it be. Well, not really. Because if you look at this plant with the three leaves, the edges of the leaves very clearly have a saw-toothed edge. Do you see the regular saw teeth on them? It also, if I look on the back, has a tiny amount of fuzz. This is wild strawberry, totally harmless. And lots and lots of plants have three leaves. So how do you get poison ivy? Well, part of the way I do it is I know where to look for it. Poison ivy likes certain kinds of things. For example, here at camp, poison ivy cannot tolerate being mowed. So the grassy areas, no poison ivy. It also doesn't really like super shade. It likes to be on the forest edge, which is frankly where I'm standing right now. So right here, I can show you what poison ivy looks like in a couple of its forms. And hopefully that helps you when you're out for a walk. Okay, so on the forest edge, poison ivy is the kind of plant, like all plants, it needs a certain amount of sunlight. So it likes to be in places like I am, where there's plenty of sunlight, but it's not being mowed. And if I look at this plant right here, we know it doesn't match our rules because it's got a soft toothed edge. In fact, this is a, a blackberry bush, and boy, they taste good in the summertime. But if you look down lower to the ground, you can see poison ivy in one of its two common forms. Here we have a three-leafed plant and the leaves are either smooth on the edges with a point, or sometimes they are have some irregular cuts in the edge of the leaf. But if you swing right over to here, you see our other three leaf plant, and that's our friend wild strawberry again. You see the, the saw teeth edged. So here, <clears throat> the trick for, for identifying poison ivy is to know that it always has three leaves, it always has a tip that's pointed, it's either smooth or it is it has a few irregular cuts, but not saw tooth. Let me show you another trick about poison ivy. A lot of folks say that poison ivy is always shiny, and sure enough, this one is pretty shiny. It's a nice young new leaf, and sometimes later in the fall, they'll be shiny again. But if you look right next to it, this one's not shiny. So shiny's not doing it for me. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Just like in the fall, sometimes they're nice red color, and other times they're nice and green like this. But the trick is poison ivy always has three leaves, either a smooth edge with a point or a couple of irregular cuts. None of our other common woody vines look that way. And it grows in two forms. One, it can be about a foot off the ground like this, or two, it can climb up a tree. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so now come in close. We'll start with a little quiz. Look right here. Do you see some plants have five leaves? That's Virginia creeper, the most common of our woody vines. And some plants, look closer, have three leaves with either smooth edges and a tip, a pointy tip, or sometimes a few irregular cuts in the leaf. Sometimes shiny, sometimes not. And poison ivy and Virginia creeper live in exactly the same places and they can be on the ground or watch this, they can climb up a tree. And now they're climbing up a tree and holding onto the tree to try to get more sunlight. And if we look close, you can see our two most common woody vines like this. Here's the five leaves of the Virginia creeper. Not only is this harmless, but I've seen this for sale in uh, garden stores. People sometimes like to have this growing around their house. And right next to it, our three-leaved poison ivy right there. By the way, here's our biggest woody vine. It's the third really common woody vine we see here in New York State. And this is wild grape. Wild grape, single leaves, grape leaf, almost looks like little maple leaves. And grape vines grow up the side of things by having these curly little tendrils that actually grab a hold of what they're trying to climb on. Definitely not poison ivy and definitely not scary. Now, as the poison ivy is desperately trying to find sunlight, this is what happens next. If it gets the chance to grow up a side of a tree, it'll do that. And this is an older vine, and the poison ivy is now growing out three, four, sometimes six feet from the edge of the tree. And if you get really close, that's how we identify it. 
There you've got your leaves of three. The edges have got a couple irregular cuts in them. And we can even see here, these are the flower buds. You don't usually get to see the flower buds because they're usually rather high up in a tree. But here's something that I think is a real easy way to tell poison ivy. If we come back to where the vine actually attaches to the tree trunk. Get in really close. Do you see how hairy the vine is? Grape never does that. And really that's not the way um, Virginia creeper looks either. So these really hairy vines like this can be on there for years. This is a woody plant. It lives for many, many years and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Let me show you one more example. You ready? Watch my finger come right down to this. This is as close to a good lookalike as you're going to find. We've got leaves of three, a couple of irregular cuts. You're thinking poison ivy, but now look at the whole plant. This is actually a small woody tree. Poison ivy doesn't grow that way. This is box elder. It's one of our common forms of maple. But if you come right down below it, down here, pretty much within one foot of the ground, here's our poison ivy. Leaves of three, irregular cuts. There it is. And right over here, an excellent example of what a really old poison ivy vine would look like. You see how hairy it is. None of our other vines are that hairy. So now that you know what poison ivy looks like and pretty much where to find it, the next real obvious question is, what do I do if I think I've gotten into it? Or how can I get it? Well, there's good news and bad news. Poison ivy is a contact irritant to your skin. There's a chemical in the sap that gets on your skin. And if it stays on your skin, for most people, it'll give you a rash. For some people, like my son, that rash in a couple of days will actually develop into blisters and really is a problem. But for some other people, it seems like they hardly ever get it. They're very resistant to it. The truth is, like any other sort of an allergic reaction, you can have uh, a good resistance to it, and then as you grow older, it can get less good resistance, and you can get poison ivy more easily. There's also another thing to think about. You can get as close to poison ivy as you want. You will not transfer that sap onto your skin. When do you do it? When you walk through it and later on you go to tie your shoe, you can transfer the sap from your shoelace to your fingers. How about when Ollie, the camp dog, or maybe your cat at home, walks through the poison ivy, gets the sap on their fur, and later on you're petting them. Yep, that's an easy way to get poison ivy, is from your clothing or from your pets onto your skin. But here's the good news. For most people, like me, is if you know you've touched it, if you wash your hands with soap and water within an hour and get that oily uh, sap off of your skin, you won't really have a reaction. Another piece of good news, it's not a disease. So if you have a poison ivy rash on your hand or your arm and your friend touches it a couple of days later, are they going to get it? No, you can't give someone poison ivy. What you can do is if in the first hour or so you've got sap on you or your clothing and someone else touches it, that could be a problem. So the worst part of the story is that if your dog walks through the poison ivy or if you've got poison ivy on the, the oil on your shoes, you can let those things sit around for weeks or months and the poison potential never goes away. So for some people, you could be putting on a, 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 a shirt or a, or a coat you haven't worn in months and have a reaction to the poison ivy. So you got to think about that. What works well though, wash your clothes. If the pet has gone through it like Ollie has today, got to give him a bath and you'll probably be just fine. So here at Camp Tilly, we try to keep kids safe from poison ivy in a really simple kind of a way. We recognize that poison ivy is a common plant all over New York State. Every forest and forest, jet, forest edge has it. And we start off by teaching kids what it looks like. We teach our staff what it looks like. And we say to them, hey, stay in the grassy areas, stay on the trails. And if you're going to walk through the forest, make sure you know where you're stepping. If you think you've touched it, wash your hands. And this works really, really well. So mostly it's about knowing what to look for and where to look for it. So good luck the next time you're out walking around and maybe you'll get to see some poison ivy before it sees you. Take care.